Hi, this is Jake from Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be introducing you to some of the charting basics on Optimus Flow. We'll be covering how to open up a chart, how to change time interval, chart style, how to add indicators, and simple functions of that nature. So the first time you do open up Optimus Flow, you should be presented with a default workspace. Now I've changed my workspace a little bit here, so it may look a bit different than when you first open up the platform. Either way, the central focus of Optimus Trader is the toolbar that runs along the top of the platform. Now you'll notice that Optimus Flow works in a sort of windowed desktop system. And what I mean by that is, like I said, the main hub of Optimus Flow is this toolbar at the top of the page. Everything you open up after that will be opened up in its own separate window. As you can see, we have our community form in the back there. Feel free to ignore that. But the main feature I'd like to show you here is that every time you open up something different, it opens it up in its own window system, and then you can attach it to the toolbar at the top. So again, the main focal point is that toolbar. So if you don't have a chart up or you'd like to start from scratch here, you can open up a chart by simply navigating to the top left hand corner of Optimus Flow and clicking on the CHT button, and that will open up a chart here. Now, there are a couple different ways to open up charts. You'll notice that there's also in the very top left hand corner next to the CHT button an Optimus Flow logo. This is actually the main source and where you can open up every single widget within Optimus Flow. You'll see there is a star next to the chart option. Again, these two buttons are the same exact thing, the CHT button at the top and the CHT button under my Optimus Flow logo. The main difference here is that this has been added to the toolbar here as an ease of functionality. So if you do see any buttons on here that don't have a star next to them, all you have to do is just right click, click on pin a toolbar, and then you see it creates a little shortcut for yourself. So again, you can open up a chart by just coming down to here in the Optimus Flow section or by clicking on the CHT button there. And here we have it, we have a couple different charting windows. So if you'd like, you can actually minimize this and we can snap a chart here and we can snap a chart there. Let's go down here. It looks like I accidentally closed that out. Let's open up a new chart. Here we go, we can snap it down and then we can open up another one. So as you can see, Optimus Flow is pretty much a combination of a bunch of different windows that you can combine to make the platform of your own. Everything snaps to this main toolbar here, and once it's snapped in place, then you can begin attaching other windows and widgets to anything that you have attached to the main toolbar at the top. Now, as far as opening up charts, there's also TPO charts. Um, you can access them from the top left as well. You can click on TPO, or you can again, come down to the Optimus Flow logo. Here's your little main menu. Open that up and then click on TPO. Here's a brief example of a TPO chart. We'll get into this in other videos, but I just wanted to show you that this is possible. So again, we're gonna stick to the main features or the main core functionalities of charting. And in this video, TPO is a bit more advanced, so we'll leave that on its own. Now from here, let's look at a couple of different options that we have. As you can see, you can create multiple uh, tabs here in which you can pretty much just swap back and forth between charts within a window here. This is going to be called a group. Now, if you don't have a group, everything is pretty much going to be on its own window. So let's take a look. And for the first example, let's go ahead and change the symbol of our chart. Here we have the basic ES. This is going to be the front month contract of the E-mini S&P 500. If you don't designate a sp uh, specific contract month or year, it will automatically apply the front month. So if you want to search for or add a new future symbol to our chart, all we need to do is click on the search bar. It will open up um, a tree type system in which you can select the different options that you want to choose from. There's a filter here as well. You can filter based off a of type in exchange if you want to. As you can see here, are the different filter types. Uh, we don't necessarily need that for this video, and here's exchanges as well. Um, 
we'd like to leave it generic as possible. So let's just, for example, click on the CME drop down. Let's click on the NASDAQ. Here we have the front month, which of course loads first. We do have some options and spreads down here. We can choose, let's say, for example, the NASDAQ of December 2019. Double click. And as you can see, we're now working with a NASDAQ chart. Just to show you one more time, let's do, for example, gold. We open up our search bar here. If we wanted to, we can simply type in GC, let's say GZ9, since we know the exact contract month we want to trade. Um, and you'll see GC pops up. If we want to, we can press enter and, and the exact contract should pop up. Um, if not, we can just simply search through the gold futures section right here. As you can see, most of these are options and spreads and things of that nature. Here's the GCZ9. Again, if you just choose a GC, that'll just load the front month only or just the front month. So not much liquidation here, but just wanted to give you an example of a different contract that we can load on our charts. Uh, let's try one more down in the bottom left. Let's do under the NYMEX exchange. We'll click this drop down. We'll click futures. Let's do crude oil here and we'll load the front month for crude oil with a double left click. There we have it. So we're now working with four different charts. Again, if you want, you can work with the tab system by pretty much just drop it, dragging and dropping. As you can see here, we have our chart on its own. We can drag it up to the top here and now it becomes a group. Very simple and an easy way to stay organized. So you definitely have quite a few options. If you wanted to, you can create a dome on one side and then have all your charts within one window here and then swap back and forth. It really just depends. Now, as far as some other basic features of charting, let's go through this really quickly. As far as your time interval or your scales here go, you can load those right here. You'll see it's currently at time one minute. You can do things such as five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hours. You can do one day. We also have some advanced charting types such as Renko, Heiken and Ashi, range bars, line breaks. There's a ton of different stuff here. Let's just look at a Renko bar real quick. Click apply. And there we have it. Now you can also look at the depth and history. As you can see, we're only currently on a one day time interval. If you want to go further than that, we have up to in rhythmic supports up to the creation of a contract. You can do 50 years. This is obviously going to take some time to load here. Um, quite a lot of data to go through. We can go down smaller, though. We can do a one year time interval that should load a bit quicker here. Um, just to show you on some other charts. We have five years, three years, six months, three months. There's a ton of different options to choose from. So while this loads, uh, the Renko bars loads, let's take a look at some of the other different time, or excuse me, uh, chart styles that we can load up. We have a candle by default. You can do a bar chart if you like. We have line charts. Here we have a dotted line if you prefer that, or you can do an area chart. So here we go. We're currently on a uh, Renko chart with a one minute time interval and then it's going back a one year scale just so you can look at that moving your mouse wheel up or down will allow you to scale in and out of the chart you can left click hold and drag the different intervals as well to scale in and out if you prefer to do it that way other than that as far as basic features are concerned of the charts you do have your indicator objects all on the left hand side the first button right here um, you can just simply click on that and add some indicators to your charts. Pretty much just double click. Um, it will add the indicator there and then you can customize the different settings. You can overlay different symbols. So if you want to compare two different price intervals, uh, two different contracts, you can do that at once. Or you can do, compare two different contract months here, whatever you want. Um, we have alerts you can add. Here's some drawing tools such as horizontal, diagonal lines, squares, um, Fibonacci retracements and things of that nature. Um, other than that, we have things such as, um, you know, click by trading up at the top right. You can add an order panel so you can uh, chart trade mode directly from your charts or you can go into your settings here by clicking on the cog wheel. Um, that's pretty much going to cover it for this video. We could go really in depth, but we just want to keep it as basic as possible. 
If you do have any questions, please give it a uh, post them down in the comment section below or you can head over to our community forum remember that was in the background here let's open that up quickly um, you're more than welcome to sort through our community forum you can click on the optimus flow section and ask all the questions you may have here if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe for more optimus flow content and as always thanks for watching